Okay, so uh, today I am going to make a gluten-free bread that doesn't suck. And um, I have been trying to find a, a gluten-free bread recipe uh, for a number of months now and the, and the uh, recipes that I found yielded bread more like a banana bread. That's the kind of consistency that you get when you're, uh, when you're making gluten-free bread. Now the background, and by way of introduction, and just fast forward through this if you're not interested in any of this stuff. Um, last year, our son uh, was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, and that was um, after about a year, a year and a half of being undiagnosed and misdiagnosed, and I guess a lot of people have the same, um, uh, the same experience. It's, it's a kind of a, an old story. But um, it's been a, it, it's been trying, and um, one of the things that that has come out of um, uh, out of the experience is um, a realization that a lot of the foods that we eat, uh, our bodies have not really evolved to the point where we could digest it easily. And gluten is one of those things. Avoiding gluten is not easy in this world, especially when we've grown accustomed to the taste of it and the and the uh, elasticity of bread and uh, you don't think about any of that stuff when you don't worry about gluten but um, uh, trying to come up with an alternative that not only tastes like bread but has the mouthfeel of bread that has the the pull the elasticity the the ability to to cut it into slices and eat it like that without it crumbling into pieces in front of you uh, even bread that even gluten-free bread that you buy in the store uh, for some reason is uh, is awful and and um, and really it, it, there's one that we that we were using that only works if you toast it first because otherwise it just crumbles into a pile of uh, sawdust on the plate it's pretty sad and the taste is nothing to write home about I found um, I found. Uh, on the internet, uh, a recipe, and the website is called One Good Thing by Jilly, and um, she's, it's quite a large website, and there's a lot of information on it. I was kind of focused in on this one thing, and um, by, the, by the recipe and by her, her blog about it, it looked promising, including the ability to even bend the bread without breaking it which we've never seen before. I, I just wanted to introduce it. That's why um, I'm, uh, I, I found the recipe. It worked beautifully. I've been using it for a couple of months now and uh, I think I've, I've got it down fairly, fairly well and I want to share my process with Jilly's recipe and let you know that I will have uh, a link to her website um, <sighs> I don't know, somewhere over here, I think, and uh, you can click on it and get there, and definitely she deserves your, your patronage as well. This is a quite a wonderful recipe. Thank you for bearing with me. Okay, so um, a couple of things that you do as pre-work, pre uh, you want um, three eggs to be uh, room temperature. I take them out of the fridge and I just put them in some very lukewarm water and just let them sit there while I'm doing my next step. Okay. Uh, the next step is uh, just setting up the yeast and I have uh, two cups of uh, water. Uh, it's warm water set at about 100 uh, degrees. It's anywhere between 100 and 110 and I'm going to put in two teaspoons of, um, of sugar. Just like that. Just stir it in. Make sure it's nice and dissolved. And then uh, two and a quarter teaspoons of uh, yeast. Two and two and a quarter. And then again, I'm just going to stir this up to make sure that it's nicely blended and, and separate up. And then it can just sit off to the side while I'm doing everything else. And um, that is active dry yeast. That is not instant yeast. And that's a 
a big distinction. Okay, so uh, while this is here and you can see it uh, bubbling, so you know that yeast is already uh, starting to do its job. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grind up some chia seeds. Now you can also get chia seeds uh, ground already, um, but the fact of the matter is that they're more expensive if they're ground. And if you have a little thing like this, um, it's a little coffee grinder that we've had for like 20 years. If you have something like this, that works just fine. Anyway, okay, so now again with my clumsy left hand, one tablespoon of the chia seeds. Just ignore those seeds on the back of that spoon. Okay. Chia butter. Yummy yummy. Okay, so I have uh, pre-measured everything that I need and uh, I'll let you know what this is. This is one and a third cups of brown rice flour. Uh, one and a third cups of tapioca flour, or starch. This stuff is so fine, it gets all over you. I'll just let you know that. One and a third cups of cornstarch. And then one tablespoon of potato starch or potato flour. Add to that uh, one tablespoon of the chia seeds, which we just ground up. This is xanthan gum, and it's one tablespoon of that. teaspoons of sea salt. Two. Now I'll just uh, mix it and blend it all together. And I want to make sure this is well blended. Now, when you um, are, are um, baking uh, gluten-free, and after you've actually made this recipe for yourself, you'll probably you, you decide you're gonna make it all the time. And there are shortcuts that you can do. You can have the, um, uh, the dry ingredients all mixed together, for example. You can just do this. Um, one day you can do several batches. Um, I've actually figured out the, uh, the ratios to make, uh, and this is a batch, uh, this batch will make two uh, small loaves of bread, but even though they're small, they're, they weigh about a pound and a half each, like they are heavy, so they're very satisfying, even a small amount. And um, so this makes, this uh, amount will make two loaves of bread. And um, I've increased it by uh, 50% uh, each ingredient in order to be able to make three loaves of bread. And uh, you'll see that I do freeze whatever I'm not gonna make immediately. And uh, they work perfectly. If you freeze them, they'll still rise. Everything will still work very, very well. Okay, this is all blended together. Now I'll just move on to the wet ingredients. Okay, so um, we're finished the putting the dry uh, ingredients together. Now we're going to put together the wet ingredients. And I'll let you know that the, although I don't think you're going to be able to see it, there's not much chance I don't think, but the uh, yeast is uh, all frothy and bubbling on top and very foamy. And yeast is what I smell the most. Okay, so I've got the eggs, they're definitely room temperature, and I'm going to break them into a little bowl one at a time in case one of them ends up having a blood spot or something. There. Okay, to that, now um, I am going to use silk uh, creamy cashew, uh, cashew milk. You can really use any kind of milk that you want, including milk, 
<laughs> but um, we're trying to keep this dairy free and um, uh, it really tastes just fine um, using the ingredients that I'm using. So what I've got here is a half a cup of the milk. And again, you could use butter or anything. I'm using coconut oil because uh, we like coconut oil. And again, trying to keep this dairy free as much as possible. So there's a quarter cup of coconut oil. Now, of course, coconut oil is solid. So I, I just let this go in the microwave until it was uh, uh, liquidy. Makes it easier to work with. Um, two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. and one-third of a cup of honey. Mm, if there's one thing I should have had pre-poured, it was this. Come on! Mm. Mm. Okay, I'm all done with that now. This is why I like to be alone when I'm baking. And when I bake on my own, I always turn the table sideways and put a tablecloth on it. I dress up in my nicest clothes. And I just talk to myself. So I figure, well, since I'm doing that anyway. Okay, now I'm just going to, I mean, I'm not going to beat this so that it turns into an omelet, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to stir it so that it all gets blended together. And you want to make sure that you do this even though the liquid itself isn't, uh, isn't much in there. But uh, you want to make sure that you um, are using a big enough bowl because all the ingredients are now going in here. Okay, so now I'm going to blend everything together. I'm going to take some of the flour mixture and I'm going to add some of the flour mixture to the liquids. They call it a Mickey Mouse. Got it sweet down by the chicken house. Near the flap, no skin, she's the horse's when This is my little mini mouse. Okay, so you can see it's uh, it lumps up because the uh, the flour mixture does that, the dry ingredients. And then what I do is then I add in some of the yeast. Now the one thing about this is it's not dough the way that you think of dough when you're if you're if you're uh, used to making uh, like homemade bread or, or basically any pastry. That's not what this is. It ends up being a very thick batter. And uh, don't let that turn you off because um, it works really well. Okay, so I'm gonna add some more flour. I'm going to add some more yeast and I like to actually throw in some of that foam at the same time. I want to make sure it all gets mixed together. And you can see how it's starting to get all sticky and that's because, believe it or not, that's because of the xanthan gum. Even though it's one tablespoon of xanthan gum in all of this stuff, that's how powerful the xanthan gum is in turning this into a dream come true. I'm really close to being finished now. Okay, so as you can see by the empty dishes, everything's in here now. 
and we're really, really close. And it's a, it's a kind of a, a gluey, sticky kind of, um, kind of a consistency, which is exactly what you want. But it's lumpy, and you also want that. So don't worry about it. It's not going to be smooth unless you use a mixer. But I, I've tried using a mixer, and it gums up and uh, doesn't work very well and it makes a mess. It's really difficult to clean off of the, off of the, um, the beaters. But it's a very nice warm, yeasty, rustic kind of a smell. And believe me, when it's baking, the house smells like a bakery. It is very inviting. All right, so this is the consistency that you are looking for. There's sun somewhere here that makes this a little bit brighter. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna use um, uh, like a spray and uh, I don't know, I guess this is probably canola oil. Don't really use canola oil. Uh, just as our regular oil, we use a grapeseed oil, which is very um, has a very high smoke point and also very healthy for you. But you know, first, like, what I think about it. Okay, and you'll notice as I I, I mentioned before, um, I have two different pans that I'm using. This one is, I'm going to put right into the oven. This one I'm going to wrap up and I'm going to put in the freezer. Yeah, so this is this is really what you do here. You just kind of this isn't going to fill up the pan because it does rise. It rises quite a bit actually. So I like to to kind of share them up like this. Okay, so I have two different things I'm going to do. I'm going to cover this up and put it above our fridge, which is nice and warm, and I'm going to. Um, I'm going to package this up and take it down to our freezer. Just a little bit of wax paper. And I like the wax paper or parchment paper or what else do they call it? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to Yeah, because you can push it right down on top of it and no air pockets or anything there. And then I'll just take some tin foil. So here it is. I've kind of smoothed out the top of it a little bit and uh, just a towel and I'm going to uh, again with my left hand just do this and there. Go to the fridge. I'll push it right to the back there. And I'm going to leave it there for a one hour. Okay, see you in an hour. Uh, okay, just one thing, uh, we've got five minutes left to go. It's uh, still up there, I haven't looked at it. But um, now that there's five minutes left to go, I'm going to start the bake cycle. Uh, now I am going to set this to 350 degrees. And uh, the reason that I'm doing that is because I want it to go to 375 and through testing I know that uh, our oven actually um, is about 25 degrees hotter than uh, our setting. You should probably check that out yourself for your oven uh, because uh, you know 25 degrees makes a difference. So I'm setting for 350 degrees. By the time that the timer's done that should be ready to go and then I'll be back. Okay, so there we go. Degrees, which is actually 375 degrees. If your oven is true, then you do yours to 375 degrees. That's really my point. And here we go. So this is what you want to see 
it's within maybe a half an inch of the top. Please disregard this. Just push that down where no one can see it. No evidence that that ever exists. Okay, so I'm just going to leave this here and um, you can watch it bake. I'm putting it in for 55 minutes though. So the time's up and uh, I'm gonna there. I'm gonna take it out. Oof. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. This is what you can expect it to look like. It's completely uneven and whatever. You leave it for 10 minutes to cool down, okay? So here it is, I've taken it out of the pan and you can see it's nice and, and uh, brown all the way around and on the bottom. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut it now. You can see it here. I'll cut one slice. It's probably better to leave it for a little bit longer than I've just left it. It's still too hot. Yeah, it's still too hot. It hasn't been very long. But, um, you can see how spongy and elastic it is and you can move it around and it's not crumbly and it's just it's bread it's fantastic <laughs> and it tastes like sourdough bread like you get at spaghetti factory if you know where that is okay so uh, thanks for watching and uh, good luck making your bread